Let's invent a game called weather. Weather is unpredictable, so we'll put some randomness in the game by rolling dice. People have been playing with dice for at least 5,000 years. They come in all shapes and sizes, but have a common purpose to generate randomness. When dice are rolled, or thrown, or cast, or tossed, or shot, your choice, many results are possible, but what actually happens isn't known until it happens. Dice, or one die to use the singular, are the world's original random number generator. We may not know what they'll give, but at least we can figure out what to expect, if they're fair, that is. The most common form is the six-sided die, a cube with a different number for each face, ranging from one to six. They're often rolled in pairs, as in the gambling game craps, but sometimes singly or in groups of five or more, like in Yahtzee. We'll roll 12 dice and add them up, the result indicating what the weather was like for a single year. The mean value for rolling 12 dice is 42, if they're fair, that is, which will represent weather so good we have a great year. For a 42, we'll award ourselves six points. If we're one off with a 41 or a 43, we only get five points. Two off, we get four points, etc., all the way to five off, a 37 or a 47, which is only one point. Those are the good weather years. If we're off from the average by anywhere from 6 to 12, if we roll between 30 and 36, or between 48 and 54, then we'll say the weather is just okay, so we don't gain any points, but we don't lose any either. But if our roll is too extreme, 29 and below, or 55 and above, we're in the bad region and we lose points. We'll pretend it's extreme weather, such as brings flood, drought, hurricane, tornado, killer heat wave, killer cold wave, all spelling trouble. The least extreme bad rolls cost only one point, but as is the case with trouble, as it gets more severe, the damage rises rapidly, so we'll square the amount into the bad region to get the point loss. The most we can be is 18 on either the high or low end, so if we roll a 12, a 1 on each of 12 dice, or a 72, a 6 on all 12 dice, we're penalized 324 points. It might seem like a losing proposition to have the maximum reward for any one year be only six, while the maximum loss is 324. We would need 54 years of best possible weather to make up for a single year of worst possible weather. Isn't that just a recipe for misery? Not at all, because despite the extreme cost of the worst possible weather, the chance of that happening is small. The chance of rolling either 12 or 72 on a dozen dice is less than one out of a billion. Taint likely. Here are the probabilities for each roll, and I've marked out the regions we call good, okay, and bad. It's plain to see that the good region has all the most likely rolls, and the bad region all the least likely. If that is, the dice are fair, I used my computer to roll the dice for 1,950 years and got these rolls. The biggest single year gain was six points, which happened 144 times, while the biggest single year loss was 49 points, but that disaster only struck once. The most common score, 584 times, just about 30%, was zero points for okay weather. The running score is shown here. As you can see, it's easy to win this game. Despite random ups and downs, over the long haul, we gained an average of about two points per year. The game is rigged for you to win. It has been said that climate is what we expect, weather is what we get. Let me rephrase that. Climate is the rules of the game. Weather is the roll of the dice. There's an unspoken rule in the game I made up. The dice have to be fair. What if we change that rule? It's just as easy for my computer to simulate loaded dice as fair dice. 
So starting in 1951, I changed how the dice behave. I did so slowly at first, building up so they're more and more loaded as time passes. By year 2000, they're loaded noticeably, but not extremely. The year 2000 probabilities for a 12 dice roll are here. The probabilities are different, but the rolls are still the most likely, the good ones, just not as likely as they used to be. Bad ones are still the least likely, but more common than they used to be. This means we can expect to gain fewer points on average, and we can expect to lose more points on average. But that's the climate, the rules of the game, which now include progressively more loaded dice. The weather is still the role, still random. So we know what to expect, but we don't know what happens until we roll the dice. Running it for another 50 years, I got these results. Most of those years, the dice are so slightly loaded, you could hardly tell. But look at the running total score. We see we haven't made much progress since 1950. There have been fewer good years and more bad ones, and the bad ones have been a little bit worse. We even had one year where we lost 81 points. Now that could have happened merely by chance, even with fair dice. But the new rules call for the dice to get more and more loaded. By year 2050, we expect this. At that point, we're considerably more likely to get bad years than good ones. Because the bad years are more destructive than the good years are constructive, it's starting to look like a losing game. Running the game out to the year 2100, loading the dice a little bit more with each passing year, I got this. By year 2100, we rarely get a year that's even okay. The number of bad years is off the charts, and when trouble comes, it's worse than we've seen before. Our running score was on the rise for 1,950 years, but half a century our progress stopped, and in the century following, we've been losing. Fast. This doesn't portray the physics of climate change, but it does illustrate a few important things. One is that as we change climate, we are changing the rules of the game. Our civilization has developed to make best use of the rules we've lived with for 10,000 years or so. But the changes to come, the changes we've seen already, mean fewer good years, more bad ones. We'll still see all types. The dice are still random, but the roles are leaning in a way not in our favor. Another is that the biggest change is in the likelihood of extreme values, the really bad weather years. As a result, when we move into dangerous territory, things don't get worse at a constant rate. Trouble starts small, then builds more and more momentum. And by the time change has gotten big, we won't just be headed for trouble. We'll be doing so at breakneck speed. If we don't stop loading the dice soon, we'll lose a lot faster than we won.